Good afternoon. I'll try and keep this brief because I know lunch is imminent. Um, so, uh, my name is John Dickinson from a company called Fuel Oils. Um, we have vast experience in supplying biodiesel in the road transport industry. We go back as far as uh, 2004 supplying biodiesel. Um, our credentials, well, uh, we got involved with the London Borough of Bromley in a project called the Bistro Project to supply um, the local borough with biofuel collecting from local restaurants and producing fuel. Um, that was unsuccessful and then moved to transport to London, transport for London, um, and uh, the problems they encountered were that uh, they couldn't actually get the product from the restaurants because it was soon discovered that there was a value in the oil that was collected in the UK and um, making a point, uh, a gentleman made a point earlier about the quality of biofuel in the UK, he's absolutely right, the, the quality is very poor because there are such inconsistent uh, issues with um, used cooking oil with fats added to those collections, um, various other contaminants. So. Um, as I said earlier, there won't be any supplies from the UK going into any of the gas oil um, as of January. It will be all with um, product from Germany. Um, we're currently involved in a major project with a well-known water utilities company as well uh, to supply a custom biofuel uh, developed in association with Brighton University. So we've learned an awful lot about biofuel. Um, what is it? Well. As I think you already know, it's a fuel derived from used cooking oil or a virgin oil such as rapeseed, corn or a soybean oil. Um, yes, it's known as famed fatty acid methyl esters. And uh, where is it produced? Well, as I said before, mostly in Germany. Um, Spain have started to produce biodiesel uh, quite successfully. And the smaller UK producers cease trading after the government um, removed the 20p duty concession in the April budget, there are still regulations to, to reclaim that concession if you can prove that you're using used cooking oil. But unfortunately, um, it's being sold abroad, would you believe, for as much as 45p a litre. That is for waste cooking oil from restaurants. So there's very little production in the UK. Um, I think what I should do is explain to you the effects that we've seen with 100% biodiesel, that's B100, uh, and this is all from our experience with our clients in road transport. Um, in its purest form, biodiesel will quickly remove rust particles from the walls of fuel tanks. It will dissolve nitrile rubbers, seals, and it will also shift sludge. It is a solvent. And it can be an effective paint stripper. Um, a rusty metal object, such as a spanner left in a container overnight, will completely remove the rust. So it gives you an idea of its potency. Um, old, older road vehicles that have used high blends of biodiesel have experienced severe filter clogging. Um, so, what will the. Sorry, I should have. What will be the effects from the new gas oil specification? Well, as we know, as of January 2011, uh, the EU directive is that a minimum of 4% uh, to a maximum of 7% of biodiesel must be present in all road derv. Because the new sulphur levels for gas oil are coming in line with current derv specs, of course, there will be the red dye added to the derv along with the biodiesel. That is for the inland gas oil that we've discussed. Um, derv with the biodiesel, um, the dye is added and, and from the producer's point of view um, it will negate the need for the production of two separate products. Um, the current statutory levels in road derv do seem to affect older vehicles over a longer period of time, that is to say that um, with the smaller blends there is a change, they are finding that there are contaminants. Um, mainly that fuel filters need to be changed more frequently. 
Uh, most newer vehicles seem to be unaffected. Um, we do supply local authorities with blends of 20 and 30 percent uh, and we actually find that they're using the new vehicles and there are no problems whatsoever. So it's really on the older vehicles that um, will feel the effects of the solvent attributes of, of biodiesel. So that probably would apply to yourselves and, and marine vessels. Um, obviously there's another issue, the formation of bacterial growth in the fuel tank. Uh, of course biodiesel can retain water hydroscopically, so promoting this growth. So that's something that we, we need to deal with. I know there are companies here, uh, we also are talking uh, to companies that offer biocides which will inhibit or completely remove the bacterial growth. So it's worth you talking to people here to uh, see what they have to offer. Um, what can be done to minimize the effects? Well, um, if possible, have the tanks cleaned to remove any water sludge or rust deposits before taking your first consignment. I think we've uh, already covered that. Um, as previously stated, biodiesel will affect certain rubbers and plastics. Uh, the best thing to do is check with your diesel engine manufacturer and see if there's any known problems with the use of biodiesel. Uh, if there are, they, might, they may already have replacement parts um, if they've sort of anticipated this. Um, and of course that will reduce any problems from the start. Regular testing is more important now than it ever has been and accurate fuel monitoring systems along with proven biocides to act when growth is detected is really important. Modern biocides can actually inhibit and remove certain types of bacterial growth as I said before. Um, Manageable, effective and accessible filtration systems that are designed for regular use are something you should consider. Uh, possibly your filtration systems are, since you're not using them as regularly, uh, maybe in a place where you know, it's, it's, it's not convenient, but I would recommend that you can access those and actually monitor those on a regular basis. Right, the, the big question, can gas ore be obtained without the addition of fame or biodiesel? Well, um, as an independent distributor, we actually talk to all the major suppliers. We are a, a, a distributor, so we, we have access to um, any source of fuel. Um, and at this moment in time, there seems to be different strategies coming from the majors. Uh, some are saying that well, they will be adding biodiesel at the blending stage and at the refineries, others will not add biodiesel until it gets to the loading gantries. Uh, this will of, of course prove problematical to suppliers as most tank farms in the UK are shared with each other. That is to say that um, if we load from uh, the Corriton terminal, there are three or four majors that use the same storage, so we're talking about drawing the same fuel. Um, so it's, it's, it's about isolating the gas oil that we need. Um, so there may be a certain percentage of biodiesel in all gas supplied if it can't be separated. Um, there's also the consideration of course which has been mentioned earlier of costs from uh, the 1st of January gas oil will become more expensive, uh, 1.8p a litre more expensive, um, maybe up to 2p a litre and that's without the biodiesel content which could add another 0.8 of a pence per litre. Um, so naturally there'll be a high demand for the non-biogas oil from all sectors, which could outstrip supply. Um, so to conclude, all sectors of the market must be prepared when using different suppliers that there could be elements of biodiesel in the fuel delivered to take all the practical steps to minimise the effects to their business. Now, I can confirm that there will be non-biogas oil available um, in the Thames area. Um, I don't have any more details, but it has been confirmed that a, a, a separate storage facility has been allocated uh, to store this product, mainly because of your concerns. Um, but I'll have more information probably in the next week or so, so uh, perhaps I can um, advise you accordingly. But um, I think your main concern is, can we get this product without biodiesel? 
Um, the answer is yes, but I can't tell you how much will be available and, and there may be a limited supply. Um, that's it from me. Um, thank you very much.